Hello, Zoom Shakalaka, everyone. If you're alive and breathing, you made the cut. Welcome to our show. Welcome. Welcome, welcome, welcome. And today we have a great guest. We're so excited to be Zooming live stream with our viewers today, Shadiva. We got a great guest, our one and only true supporter, Travis Ferguson. Travis, welcome to our show. Thank you. Thank you. I'm very excited to be here. Um, tell you what, I can't think of a better way to kick off the new year than to be hanging out with you guys. So very, very excited to be here. Thank you, Travis. Thank you. We really appreciate that. Yeah, absolutely. Exactly. And um, you know, Travis, we've been voted the best Zoom Shakalaka show that's live on Facebook every Friday for the whole year of 2020. And so we, um, yeah, we're what we're really good because we have people like you and uh, Mr. Greatness. We've had Matt, uh, Matt Gilbert on our show. We've had the mayor. We've had some super duper great people. And so um, you want to congratulate us for being the best show on Facebook at four o'clock? Well, of course, <laughs> of course, I want to congratulate you guys. And I tell you what, no one deserves it more than you guys. Um, and you know, you don't have to tell me who all oh. has been on the show because, you know, I'll be tuned in every week anyway. Um, but uh, but no, you guys have been working hard. You guys provide uh, provide a, an, an awesome service to the community. So um, I am very excited to be here with you guys and just to say that I know you. Oh, all right. <laughs> Likewise, Travis. And for those of our viewers that know, Travis also is a great contributor and subscriber to The Soul Town. Soul the Town. Soul Town, yes. Yes. Um, if you haven't gotten this month's issue, you need to grab it right away. As you can see, that beautiful... Kwanzaa cover right there is worth the price of the subscription just by itself. There are some great uh, articles and things like that that are being touched on in there, and it's just really a beautiful production. So. Yes, made by our hometown, Sheree Kaba. Make sure you get your subscription to the Soul Town Magazine.com. Make sure you go there and get that. And to, this cover is a great depiction of what we're going through right now. Um, Kwanzaa is the last day of Kwanzaa and a very happy new year. We'd like to wish our viewers a happy new year today, starting it out. And Travis, we want to ask you as our realtor, we know we got a drawing coming up here pretty soon. And Shaviva is going to tell us where our names come from in just a moment. But Travis, tell us a tip what would the Ferguson team recommend for our viewers as far as real estate goes at the beginning of a new year? Well, I tell you what, that's a great question. Um, and, you know, a lot of times people don't really understand how to translate what the market is doing. Um, obviously, it's the new year. Uh, it's, it's winter. Um, we're in the midst of the holidays. Um, there's a lot of different things going on in that could mean a number of different things. What we're trying to make sure that people understand right now, if you are in the process of buying and selling, is just understanding what this market is doing. It's a very, very strong market. But what we're seeing right now is a really low inventory, which is actually kind of a good thing, especially for the sellers. But it just means that buyers don't really have as much to choose from right now. So um, the advice that we're giving everybody to answer your question is um, you know if you are on the search for a home, um, obviously this is a great time to do it. Interest rates are extremely low. Um, this is a fantastic time uh, to buy, but we always recommend make sure that you have a game plan when going on to the search. A lot of times these houses are selling, you know, the first day they hit the market, and um, and if you sit around and wait for Zillow to pick it up, a lot of times by the time you see it, it'll be sold already. So uh, have you know. Uh, a strategic plan, you know, with the search and everything. And have, if you're selling, you know, this is the perfect time to sell. You know, even if you're thinking of some time between now and the next five years, uh, this is an amazing time because of low inventory. So a lot of things to know. Um, it's a tricky market right now, but a very strong market. So we're very excited about that. What's a good part of the, of your strategy? What's a good part of your, or should be a good part of your search strategy? 
Well, I tell you what, the the biggest thing is to know exactly what you're I'll looking for. What's that? Call what? Travis. <laughs> yeah, exactly, exactly. <laughs> Do that and then we'll take care of the rest. But no, the biggest thing is just know what you're looking for um, and making sure that you have an agent that's putting feelers out there to hopefully, you know, catch a house before it hits the market possibly um, and get the jump on it. But the biggest thing is just knowing what you're looking for and being ready to pull the trigger when the perfect house pops up. All right. All yeah. right. Great idea. Yes. And Shaviva, we have some great guests. We're going to want to tell our viewers to keep watching because we're getting ready to do that drawing. And we have great guests today. We have an inspirational story coming up from uh, Shirley Houghton, who has been experiencing um, COVID-19, um, this whole shutdown situation for a long time. And her and her husband have, have endured 290 days apart from each other. So she's going to come and give us some encouragement on how we can deal with those, those types of things. And then we have Mr. John Childs, Shaviva, and this yes, guy. Of the Waterloo Cedar Falls Symphony. Um, I really look forward to talking to him because I look around and I think to myself, especially when I find someone that's doing great things like that, I'm like, how have we gone this long without meeting him? But now we finally get a chance to talk to him. Right, right. And you're going to love what he has to say. But first, we're going to give it air, Travis. And we know you're on the run. We got a lot of things we got to get done with you today. But we want to give it some air. This is a segment we've moved up to the front of our show right now. You have seen a viral video of the 14-year-old boy that was attacked by what we'll call a Karen. Have you seen the viral video, Travis? I, I know you've you been know, busy doing a lot. Of I, I haven't watched it. I've talked to a few people about it, and I've heard enough about it to, you know, to kind of get the, the picture of what's going on. Yeah. So, Shaviva, our question, I think, today is what, what, what characteristics does this woman show? In your opinion, Shaviva? Well, um, of course, there's there's implicit bias as far as automatically assuming that this young man was guilty, just based off of the fact that you have something missing. And the other thing is a certain amount of white privilege. Nobody likes to hear that term um, in regards to themselves, but I'm saying to uh, speaking certain things into existence as far as, okay, my situation, my thing is missing. You must be the person who took it automatically without any kind of um, evidence to support that. And so people, and that's, that leaves a segment of society, black people and people of color, just sort of walking on a tightrope to not be characterized as that, you know, guilty person at any given time. It's exhausting. Right. And Travis, yes, exactly. It's exhausting. Uh, bearing the burden, uh, false burden of other people's fears. Travis, you have a 14 year old. How would that make your son feel if he was just assumed to be guilty um, of well, a, a, and accused of taking somebody's property? Well, you know, that's, that's it, it's a it's a sad but true um, topic that, you know, we've we've talked about obviously a lot more in the last year than than in the past, but it, it's a sad but true um, topic that as parents, we have to uh, discuss with our kids. Um, and, um, and really, I think my job as a parent or part of my job is just to make sure that my son knows that society does look at him differently than, you know, possibly his counterparts and then again, possibly his classmates and teammates. And, um, and if as long as he can say that, you know, he was shown the ropes then really I, I think that's really all as parents we could do is just make sure that they understand you know what to watch out for what unfortunately to do if you pull you get pulled over you know these are all things that like we said we've had to you know talk to our kids about so um as far as what happened i think what we're seeing now is just a lot of, of the things that have been going on forever that are now getting caught on camera a lot more and, uh, and really, I think that's the only difference. I think this is not something new. It's not something that no. we're, you know, that, that we're just getting exposed to. I think it's just for a lot of people that haven't been living um, in that reality. I think this might be the first time that they are seeing it because of camera phones now. 
but unfortunately it's been a conversation that we've been having to have with our kids uh for centuries i know that you guys had it with me you know and 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 things like that and i think you know unfortunately i'm starting to have those same conversations with my kids right it seems like a perpetuality actually you know and i think and and you know me i've always often said that i don't think it's going away anytime soon but it's our job to give it air shaviva yes because when you air stuff out that sometimes is the best disinfectant we want to thank That's you Travis, for for joining us today and we're looking forward to Hooking back up with you again when India's Friday runway comes back on the 15th and you and Katie are going to be sharing some fashion tips. Absolutely. Yeah. I'm very, very excited about that as well. I know Katie's got some things up her sleeve and um, and we are very much looking forward to that. All right. Well, Travis, if you have a few more minutes, we wanted to talk to you about our year in review and then let you go. Is that OK? Yeah, or do you got to go right now? You OK. Know I always make a few minutes for you guys. Oh, thank you. So, and then we got to do that quick drawing before we introduce Shirley. Okay, our year in review, folks. Are there any comments, Shaviva? I know we were going to look for those too, but I'll start out with our year in review. And our year in review was last year, Travis. Did you know that we started out the year with the MLK banquet and the Tarot sisters were the keynote speakers? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. I remember that was kind of a big deal. A lot of people were talking about that. The photos, I wasn't in town during it, but the photos looked amazing. I could tell you guys had a good time. Oh, yeah. We did, and they honored their mother so well. In February, we did a paint party, and um, uh, Gloria Kirkland Holmes, Dr. Holmes, hosted us there for the, what was it, the Shaviva, the uh, African American? Yeah. Yeah, a conference on African American children and families, and it was uh, a lot of young people. That was a great opportunity to work with some young people. It was quite an honor. In March, we were the MCs for the Hey Day for Hope at the House for Hope. Did you see us doing our hee haw thing, Trav? Uh, I saw, I saw y'all with your cowboy <laughs> gear on. Yeah, you, you may have noticed I didn't really get too close to that horse, but <laughs> I, I saw you kept your distance, social distancing with the horse. <laughs> Right. <laughs> we didn't know nothing about it then, but we, we were doing it. And in April, we talked to Dr. Nafisa and Sheriff Tony Thompson all about the COVID-19 and we got caught up to date with that. In May, we were hanging out with Purvis. He did that adopt a se senior program. That was awesome. Yes. Quite a big gesture by that guy. That was amazing. And I, I watched I mean, that, you know, I, I kind of watched that develop into something that um, I don't even know if he knew how big that was going to end up getting. And, um, and especially with all the restrictions and everything going on, these seniors, people, you know, are starting to realize that those seniors were really feeling the brunt of that. And I was so excited to see him kind of, you know, just take take responsibility and uh, and do something special like that. That was amazing. That was a huge highlight to 2020. Yes. yes. It certainly was. And then we had that ice bucket challenge. Shaviva, you and Travis, we were all there. That was hilarious. <laughs> that yeah. was a lot of fun. That was a lot of fun. It was the hottest day of the summer, too, it felt like. And um, uh, Chief Joel was really quite a good sport. <laughs> <laughs> he was. To take that. And wait a minute. Wait. The baby ended up taking the ice bucket challenge, too, didn't he? You, you know, I think Beckham got hit with a little uh, little yeah. friendly fire with that, with that ice water. Mm -hmm. I know. But luckily, I like you said, luckily it was one of the hottest days of the year, so I don't think he minded. <laughs> It was yeah. fun. It was fun. Then in August, Shaviva. Yeah, we had the opportunity to meet uh, Rochelle Chase, who ended up writing a really great story about us in the Iowa starting line. Um, that was, and she's just a great person, and she done a lot of great articles about other people. But that was our introduction to her. Then in September, that was sort of the official kickoff of the Friday runway, and uh, yes. That's yeah. just been uh, great. And I really love the things that India has done with it. And I'm looking forward to the things, you know, the additions that, that Travis and Katie are going to bring. Um, exactly. In October, we did the show at Verve Kombucha. That's really a great um, local spot. And, um, oh, okay. And, and in November, awesome. yeah. 
In November, we interviewed the ladies of the Cedar Valley Virtual Fashion Expo, and that was a lot of fun too. Yes, Kristen and uh, Beauty and Joy Salas were on our show. They were just a lot of fun. We played a game or something, and had they had me cracking up. <laughs> and then, yes, and then Travis, if you don't believe it, we were at the Dunsmore House in December. Did you happen to catch that show? Remember I did. I saw. Well, you you gave me a heads up, so I knew to watch out for it. So I did get a chance to catch that one. That was really cool. Right. And speaking now that you're a realtor, maybe you can buy the house, make a museum, and we can all live happily ever, ever after in 2021. That sounds like a great plan. Okay. <laughs> and that was our year in review. We hope our viewers enjoyed it. We're going to get through this drawing right away, Shabiba. You got your names ready? I do. I've got some great names in my bucket here. This is the bucket you drank out of as a kid, Travis. You know, oh, I recognize that thing. A lot of good Kool-Aid came out of that uh, yeah. out of that picture right there. The red kind. Right. A lot All of right. sugar. Yes. And these people are the people that told us why they loved living in Waterloo. So I'll are you going first, Shaviva? Or doesn't matter. Go ahead. Let's see yours first. $25 gift card from the Ferguson real estate team. Thank you, Travis. Absolutely. Here are my names. And these are people who basically, what can you say, have just been really good about coming on and saying happy birthday to other people, even when it wasn't their birthday, or just having something great and encouraging to say. So now. Making us all look good. And our winner is, oh, uh, wow, Carolyn Banks. Carolyn Banks, right. congratulations. Oh, she's always encouraging. All right. How about that? Thank you so much. Congratulations. How about that? Well, who would, you would have to know that Carolyn would win because she's always encouraging us. I mean, she would have to be in that bucket. Well, sure. <laughs> All right. Some more encouragers in there, too. What's that? Now, so we got some more encouragers in there, too, but we'll get to them later. Oh, yeah. We have more prizes to give. Keep watching our show, you guys. Next week, we got tons of stuff. Okay, but this week, we're giving away the big money from the Ferguson Real Estate Team. Thank you, Travis. This is the people that told us how much they like Waterloo. Ready? All right. Drum roll. <laughs> this one is from Lakeisha Walker. I love having the family here. I'm from Milwaukee and moved up here for a safer place, pace of slower pace of living, and to be surrounded by family. And she loves the unity and small town living. So this is a person from a bigger city. Thank you so much, Lakeisha. Lakeisha Walker, and congratulations for winning the $25 gift certificate. for. Congratulations, Lakeisha. All right, congratulations. And remember, if you're going to find a house, tell them, Rocky, call Travis at 515-661-1202 and tell them Rocky and Shaviva sent you. That's right. We'd be happy to take care of you. All right. Thank you so much for your time today, Travis. We're going to be talking to Shirley Houghton, and we All hope right. you enjoy the rest of your day. All right. Thank you guys so much. Happy New Year. Thanks, Happy Travis. New Happy New Bye. Year. All right. Bye-bye. Bye now. Oh, he knew how to go by himself. I know. He's <laughs> out of there like, Psh. <laughs> He must have been really being awful nice to hang out with us that long, I believe. Well, that was a great conversation with Travis. Shaviva, and now we get to go on, move on to our next guest, and that is Shirley Houghton. Um, yes. She's, we've all had life experiences, but Shirley has had to endure some time away from her husband, and she, we welcome to you, Shirley. Hi. Hi. Thanks for joining us, Shirley. Um, you know, as we said to you earlier today, we really enjoy have enjoyed over the months just 
watching you and um, you know seeing your the, the time and care that went into you know you and your husband being able to visit and having your date nights and we Wednesdays and things like that and this uh, COVID nineteen just really came in and and you know a gut punch and so we're we're happy to see that that hopefully things are looking now on the better side of that for you guys. Shirley, we see that 290 days you were separated from your husband. Tell us how the staff helped us make this happen. And, and like Shaviva said, made it looks like it's looking up now. Um, well, first of all, I have to say, I'm going to quickly go back to the beginning. I know I only have five minutes. <laughs> but um, the, in the very beginning of this pandemic, it was really a challenge. It really was like it was for everyone because... I was going from my job to my husband, to my brother, to my mom. Then all of a sudden, all of that was taken away. And I had all this time on my hands to tap into my energy. But and, and that what led up to the 290 days. Um, I, I, I don't even know how to explain it to you, except that it, it, it almost felt surreal. But at the same time, I knew it was real because we had always communicated by Zoom, by phone, by going to the window, peeking in. And now I'm finally really, he's actually coming towards me and I actually get to hug him. It uh, became quite emotional. It really uh, did. But uh, um, I think the staff at New Aldea, um, big ups to them because they worked so hard to pull that off, you know, to separate everybody, taking all the precautions. And so it can be done, you know, we have to be patient. I do see light at the end of the tunnel. So, so at New Aldea, has their visitation uh, policy changed at this point? They're changing slowly, you know, um, and especially I think with the vaccine uh, coming on board now that I see some other changes uh, probably going to be starting to happen. But um, they've always had a good policy of how they separated and isolated and quarantined on all of that. Um, all of the nursing homes had outbreaks, but when you follow strict protocol, it gets better. Good. So I, I give them a big up. It was just, I, I don't even know how to explain it to you guys how it was to actually put my arms around him and, and smell the cologne that he likes to wear and feel the stubbles on his face. Um, uh, and all of that combined together and I'm touching him in the flesh after 290 days. That's nine and a half months. <laughs> that, that, that 290 days really explains quite a lot. And, you know, because just that's almost a year, you know, mm -hmm. when you really look at it. And so, you know, that's just really quite a blessing for you all to finally be able to, to come back together like that. And um, we just wanted to know if you have any words of encouragement for viewers who may be going through a similar type of situation regarding their loved ones? I do. I would, for me, um, it was my, I tapped into my spirituality. It was a whole lot of praying and a whole lot of meditation. And that's honestly what pulled me through because during the time when everything was on lockdown and no restaurants, nothing, churches were not open, I found myself reading more, getting in the word more. Um, I probably should have been in it more anyway, but that gave me the opportunity to get into it more and to get strengthened even more. Plus, on top of that, I, I'll tell anybody, tap into it, energy, positive energy. By way of other people, I started reading more. I even took a course at John Hopkins University on contact tracing. This all just became, so I have a certificate for that. I'm not accredited yet, but um, just tap into positive things. You know, you have to, when you get to, those of you that are caregiver roles doing the same thing, that went through the same thing, when we get to a point where we realize that we cannot do this ourselves and that we're at a certain amount of helplessness because we can. So we have to tap into other things, energy. And for me, it was prayer and meditation. And when you're a believer, Shirley, as I know we all are, that we know that um, that God will put people in your life and oh, yes, most put definitely. your feet on the right path and set you on the right way. So even though when you give up, you look around and here comes somebody you never knew was going to even show up or you can find that ram in the bush, as we say. 
Well, we certainly appreciate you, and you have become one of our Women Who Inspires. And today, we'd like to present you with a wonderful gift from the Shari Collection. Tiffany um, Klinghammer has put together this beautiful gift package, and we want to encourage you to take a nice bomb bath. Is that what they call bath bombs? <laughs> mm -hmm. and there's a beautiful package in here for you to just pamper yourself and enjoy yourself, at least for a little while, before you have to get back on the, on your feet and go at it some more. So thank you so much. I mean, you guys are such an asset and such a force to be reckoned with in this community. I can't thank you enough. I feel honored to be here. Um, and hopefully maybe again in the future, but I love you guys and happy new year. Oh, we love you too, Shirley. Happy New Year to you. Yeah. And thank you so much for taking your time with us. And thank you for doing all that stuff for your mother, your brother, your husband, and every anybody else that needs it. We know you're there. Keep doing that stuff and make us all look good. <laughs> love you. All right. Love you too, dear. Bye now. You know, Rocky, we've got a, a few people um, who have tapped in. We've got a good few people watching and a few sure. folks have tapped in to share some encouragement to Shirley, like um, her son, Troy Houghton um, and Regina Polk. She says, I love you, big sis. And I get my encouragement from watching you. Oh, you never know who's watching. Yes. Um, yeah, and Shaviva, both of us have both been caregivers in our past. and. We know what a, what a trying time it can be. And during a pandemic, oh, Lord. I, and, you know, my godmother's in the nursing home. I know the restrictions are very tight, and we understand why. Right. And this is pretty much uncharted territory for us all, because the last pandemic of this stature was 100 years ago. Right, right. Mm -hmm. So hats off to all you essential workers and all you caregivers that don't get the credit. You know, it's a, it's a thankless job oftentimes. All right, now our next guest is Mr. John Child Shaviva. This young man gave me a call and we've been talking ever since. He's just an energetic kind of guy and we're going to love talking and find out all the things he has to offer our community. Yes, absolutely. There he is. Hi, John. Hey, guys. How are you? Great, great, great. We thank you so much for, for joining us and um, looking forward to you sharing some of that big energy with us about the things that, you do, that you're doing here in the community. Well, thanks again for having me on the show. I mean, it's kind of an honor, you know, this transplant from Virginia, uh, getting put on this show that reaches so many people and such an asset to the community. It's just awesome. So I really appreciate it. Thank you again for your time. You're so welcome, and thank you, John. Tell us a little bit about yourself being a transplant, and tell us how that all happened. All right, so I'm a military kid. My dad was Navy, so uh, we moved around Virginia, Mississippi, California, uh, Iowa now, uh, Florida. So I've lived in a lot of places. I went to undergrad in Virginia, moved here for my grad school for both of my master's programs uh, in conducting and viola performance at UNI. Um, I moved my wife out here. She had never moved in her life. She's fallen in love with it. Um, I met Mayor Hart uh, randomly a few years ago. He convinced me pretty easily. I'm like, I want to get involved in the community. What can I do? He's like, move to Waterloo. We'll get you involved. So guess what we did? We moved to Waterloo ASAP. And day one, he put me on the board of community development. So. And you found your niche. You work with Rudy there. And then, is that right? Yeah. So the yes. other thing, yeah. And I do then a, you also. Oh, Zoom, go ahead. <laughs> I know, it's that delay. Um, so the other, you, we know that you're on several boards, but tell us what you do for your living and then let's go back to what you do on the board. Yeah, so I originally, um, we, we stayed here because I got a job with you and I after I got my second master's. Um, as the director of the youth orchestra, if you've heard it, it's called NIO, Northern Iowa Youth Orchestra. Um, got that position um, and became a teacher in the UNI Suzuki School. After that, after a few years, I got involved with the Waterloo Cedar Falls Symphony. So I've slowly shifted to now my position as the director of education and operations 
with the Waterloo Theater Fall Symphony. And I still teach and conduct with you and I. But the great thing with the symphony is it lets me really get involved in Waterloo. So we're doing free concerts in Waterloo. We're doing free educational things in Waterloo. We're getting over here, getting back to where we, we started in Waterloo. So it's, it's been awesome uh, being a part of that. It's, it's awesome seeing the energy and the enthusiasm because that's really what's needed to, to highlight the good things that are happening around us all the time. And we thank you so much, John, for being a part of that. Um, how did you, how did you, what, what, what directed your career path toward being, um, become an education and operations manager for the Waterloo CFL Symphony? Well, I've always been big into music ever since I was a kid. Um, I used to get on my parents' nerves in the bed, like singing <laughs> symphonies that I had created in my head. I remember one day my dad walked in the room and was like, hey, you can shut up now. <laughs> because I was just so loud, <laughs> just singing so many different parts of music. And so music has always been my fallback for my entire life. You know, when you're, a, when you're in military, you move around so much, you meet so many different people. I had one constant and that constant was my instrument my piano and my viola, those were my constant. Um, so it just led me all the way throughout Wait, what, what, about, what about your voice? Are you a good singer? I do not think I'm a good singer because I know a lot of better singers. Um, I have been told <laughs> that I have a decent voice by singers. I am not well, trained. We're gonna put you to the test. Oh, dang. <laughs> <laughs> so what uh, instrument, do you have a go-to instrument that you like to play? That's my question. My primary instrument is the viola. It's like the violin, but bigger and deeper sounding, got a richer tone. Um, I can play the piano and I can play the violin. at a. I can play the violin at a professional level. I cannot play the piano at a professional level, but I can play it. <laughs> so if, in church, I would play it um, back in the day in, uh, in high school. Uh, oh, but in church oh. now, I play my viola. Awesome. Shaviva, you have another question for him? Um, actually, no, I don't. <laughs> well, I want to know, I want to know, um, I know that you're on these different boards. Um, what, tell us what you said. You had a lot to tell us about the board that you're on with Rudy Jones. Is that community development? Yes. So I'm on three different boards for the city currently. I am the uh, chair of the board of community development. I'm on the board of adjustments and I'm the vice president of Main Street Waterloo uh, for downtown. And what's so exciting about community development, the main reason my wife and I decided to stay in Iowa, I love you, Mayor Hart, he was a big push, but the reason we stayed is because we love this place. I've lived all over the country and this is the, by far the best place I have ever lived. So wow. once, I, <laughs> once I moved here, no, it's great. I love it. And so once he moved here, I was like, I want to be involved in this community. I want to do as much as I can. So community development, that's what you do. So we have five huge things we're doing right now that I just wanted to share with you guys. So we have COVID-19 funding. That we're going to be distributing soon um, in the coming months for businesses that are affected by COVID-19, but also for people that need help with their rent because they were laid off during this, people that were uh, helped with their mortgage and people that need help with their utilities because wow. they were laid off and had issues. So we'll have money for that coming up. We have, um, for people that wanna buy a house, home ownership is the most important part of a neighborhood and getting that build, getting everyone feeling like they have an investment in their community. We have down payment assistance for you guys. So you can contact community development and wow, get that down that payment assistance. That, now that would be my next question is how would people uh, contact make contact to find out more about these things? So if you go on to the, uh, the city website, you can go to the community development part and then you can contact the office and have any questions. Staff, our staff at community development is the best. They know everything and they can give you exactly what you need to know to get this help. Because beyond that, we have even more things. We have- Yeah, that was only three. You have two more, I think. Right. So we have, oh, so I, three more, because I'm with two. That was COVID-19 and um, our down payment. We have emergency repairs. So say in the middle of the winter, your furnace goes out. Guess who you can call? You can call community development and we can help what? you. Get the, yes. <laughs> yes. This is things people don't know about. And it's amazing. So I want to get this stuff out there. And is this income-based? Uh, what this are is, the requirements yes. to qualify? 
So I don't have the exact income numbers with me. Um, but if you, again, if you call community development, they can give you exactly the right numbers that you need to know so that everything is income based. Um, so if you need that help, the city has it for you. Um, beyond that, we also have the lead grant, which was, I'm sure you've heard of that in the, the news lately. The lead grant is a grant awarded to us by the federal government. So we, we won that grant, which is a big deal. And wow. says a lot about our staff, $3 million over the right. next three years. And what we're gonna be doing is we go into homes. If your home was built before 1978, you're renting or owning, and you have a child that is five or younger, if there is lead in your house, we will come in and eliminate it. And if wow. you know anything about lead, it is extremely toxic. So we want to get that out of all of our homes. And we have a, an older home base. So let's go ahead and go through. If, if, you, if you have this issue, if you think there's lead in your home and you have a child that's five or younger, call community development. We'll get you on that list. We've spent tens of thousands of dollars on homes fixing this stuff. And then while we're there, we may see something else. So call us, let us know, because once we're there, we're here, community development to help our community. That's uh, right, that's right, John. And what an advocate we have in yeah. you. I mean, who knew all this stuff, Shaviva? Right, right, right. This is wonderful. And we appreciate you giving us this information and letting people know who they need to contact to find out more details. Yeah, and if they ever have any questions, you have my contact information, give it to them. I don't know who it is. I will talk to anyone if I can get them help. And John, you know, another thing I want to know real quick before we have you sing, because we don't, are you tenor, alto, soprano, what are you? Well, if I am actually going to sing, I'm a, technically I'm a bass. Ooh, bass. It's all about that bass. About that bass. (laughs) <laughs> and John, what I want to know is about your orchestra. See, I used to play the clarinet when I was younger. So I want to know who in the world, what can people do if they want to join the band? I mean, who, you know, what if they want to be a part of your uh, symphony the orchestra? Youth orchestra, right. Yeah, so we yeah. have two orchestras. We have a youth orchestra, which is for high school students. We have a junior orchestra, which I'm in charge of, but I'm not the director of, uh, which is for middle school students. And then we have a community strings orchestra, which is for adults. So oh. if you want to join any of those orchestras, we have scholarships available. If, if you need, if, if your kid wants to join the Northern Iowa Youth Orchestra and you can't afford it, that's not a barrier. We have scholarships for those kids. Um, and you can just go to the UNI Suzuki School webpage and you can go to orchestras and you'll see Niall under there, you'll see a bad picture of me. <laughs> uh, and you can register via that. And again, we have scholarships, so don't worry about that being a barrier. Wow, well, I'm glad I asked. Well, Shabiba, another mover and shaker. Do you rap too? I wonder, are you into rap music? No, I, I'm a classical musician. <laughs> <laughs> that worked. If you if you were one of those, they were gonna say I like all music, but you're gonna cut the you gonna draw the line, huh? It's more that I can appreciate it. I just can't do it. Got he's it. A, he's a classic it. man, Rocky. I heard that. <laughs> I heard that. All right. Well, we got some wonderful birthday people that have been hanging on for all our whole show just to hear you sing, John. Oh they heard. They heard about that bass. About that bass. No trouble. Well, I have. <laughs> A, a professional singer, but uh, let's let's do it. Are we all singing, or just me? Well, since only one box can be on, <laughs> we thought you would do us the honors. We can we can clap, you know, and we do the Stevie Wonder version. You know that, don't you? Oh, not well enough to copy it. I could just sing. Let's just sing some Happy Birthday. How about that? <laughs> 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 all all right. Right. Okay, I'll tell you. I'll Let's shout out we, these birthday names. How about that? Yes, but I'll tell you what the deal is. We are going to sing the first two choruses so you can catch on. Then we want to hear about that bass, about that bass, about that oh, bass. God. All right. Okay. <laughs> All right. Here's how it is. And we want to say happy birthday to Irvin Sabic, Troy Goodson, Marsha Wade, Marcina Clark, Cassie Jenkins, and Samantha Lindsay. Linsing Ludwig, our dear friend. Yes, and we also want to say happy birthday to Hattie Graves, David Van Arsdale, Lori Shriver, Chuck Dale, Lorenzo Creighton, and Gabriel Benson. 
Happy birthday, everyone. We always have the best and coolest birthday people. Do you check these people out, Shaviva? Yes, we do. Yes. Oh, my goodness. And Shaviva, because they're so awesome, I'm sure you would agree. It couldn't fit more perfectly. Than to have a world party. On the day you came to be. Happy, Happy birthday. birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday. Whoa! All right. All right. Yeah, I know it. Uh, he was what? holding out on us. Just... I know. He surprised us. We'll do it again in person. We'll do it again in person. All, All right. right. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> we love that idea. And we really enjoyed, you know, the first time we started talking, I said, this young man, this man is on fire. <laughs> I wish I could sing. But yeah, we're so glad to have you and your lovely wife in the community. I know she's joined the Royal Legacy Board, and we're mm -hmm. so happy to have her there. Um, you guys are really, really doing what makes you awesome. Well, thanks and again for having us. You bet. You bet. Thank you for coming on and joining us and some beginning of the year inspiration to start us off right. Yeah. Exactly, exactly. <laughs> well, we wanna tell our viewers to don't miss our show next week when we have, now I gotta look, Shaviva. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Do we have, I know we have very we got Derek Holmes coming up. Derek Holmes. And okay. also, we got a shout out to Mr. Greatness. Mr. Greatness, Matt Gilbert, thank you for the sponsorship as well as CUNA Mutual. Is that right, Shaviva? Yes, CUNA Mutual. Thank you so much for your support of the Rocky and Shaviva podcast. That's right. And once again, thank you to our beautiful guests today. Uh, Shirley Houghton, Travis Ferguson, and the wonderful, ever popular John Tiles with that wonderful bass voice. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well, thanks again for having me. Again, I really appreciate it. All right. And to our viewers, keep doing more of what makes you awesome like John. Because it makes us all look good. That's right. See you next time. Bye now.